Okay, check one, two, sibilance. Sibilance. Wait, what is that? Mm -hmm. What is that? Okay. You gotta tell them to keep it down. Yeah. You guys wanna come watch? Thank you, Jeff. For Why do you want to quiet on the set all the time? You're I, always saying quiet on the set. I don't know. It's just because I like to say that. Honestly, it's not quiet on the set. We have a live audience today. A live audience? Yeah, we where, do. Where, they, where are they at? They're back there. They're not paying attention. I know they are. Look, <laughs> I don't think that guy's dead, so it might be a dead audience. <laughs> well, the point is we got you to come through and you brought your, your family. I brought my son. I didn't bring my whole family. Because this would have been gone already. Look at these ribs. They look great, huh? Yes, yes. So shout out to Ham Bones. We are out here at the Stand Up Comedy Club in Bellflower, California. That sauce is great. Man, this is some good barbecue. It is. I mean, you guys got to get out here if you guys want good barbecue. I love barbecue. I'm starving. So I hope you're hungry, Jeff. I am very hungry, to tell you the truth. This is... Mm. That's good. Okay, let me try it. I'm not a fan of the bread. I tried it earlier, but everything else is just remarkable. I got two pieces because I love cornbread. That's like my favorite. Yeah, so. Where'd you grow up at? I grew up around the world. You know, I'm a military brat, so. So where's the weirdest place you've been? What's the weirdest thing you've eaten? Because I've eaten Probably a cricket before. Probably haven't eaten a cricket. How was it though? It was, it just, just tasted like, like crunchy. They say crickets are good for you. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. I mean, maybe that's a lie, but. Oh, I ate it and nothing happened to me. I guess it's like, not vegan. That wouldn't make, it's vegetarian, I believe. It's vegetarian? Because they have protein. I thought that vegetarians don't eat anything that, that was alive. No, vegetarians, vegans don't. Okay. Vegetarians eat bugs. Crickets? <laughs> yeah. Imagine if we ate roaches, like nobody would go starving. <laughs> Well, my, my son says that lobster is roaches of the sea. Nah. He always tells me they're that. Like, they're like bottom feeders, but he they're not like... He always tells me that. Nah, come on, lobster. Because I think they're the same body type. They're both like anthro anthropologic or something like that. Okay, so, okay, stop, so stop, all right? <laughs> on, on this show, you're only allowed to say words <laughs> that you know the meaning of. <laughs> Look that up. Somebody check that yeah, out. Yeah, I know, right? We need a fact finder on yeah, this. Yeah, figure out what's the actual name for a lobster, like the body type. Oh, no, lobsters are crustaceans. Yes, they are crustaceans. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, everything lives in the shell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. 10th grade science, way yeah. to be. <laughs> I feel fancy. I know I'm not afraid of an animal unless they made a movie about it. <laughs> they haven't made a movie about crickets. No, they haven't. So, like, that would be like killer crickets. <laughs> They, they did make, um, what was it, arachnophobia. <laughs> they made Jaws. They made Cujo. That's the rabbit uh, dog, right? Yep. They made Planet of the Apes. Mm. I, you know what, I don't, I don't like the concept of that movie. If monkeys could kick our ass, <laughs> yeah, oh they would have done it a long time ago. I mean, you know what I'm saying? A was, monkey kicking our ass? No way. Yeah, people love that movie too. It was like a huge hit. Yeah, well, they keep making more of them. Mm, not good. Mm. Do you like barbecue? We love barbecue. Me too. Like, who doesn't like barbecue? Mm. I, was, I was talking to the owner earlier, and he said that um, everybody, you know, all the places around here, they try and say that they're from Texas or from, you know, Louisiana, but they're actually all from California. And oh, yeah. <laughs> but if you go, like, to the south and you have barbecue, they kind of, like, screw it up for you until you find stuff like this. Like, you go around the barbecues down there, like, in Mississippi and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's killer. Really, at a gas station. You're at a gas station and you're eating the best ribs you ever had. Mm. It's, it's really weird. It's like, but this is close to what I had. The best, I think it was Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. Tony's Rib Shack, I think it was called. And I went there, I, I stayed there from Thursday to Sunday. I ate there like three times that week, weekend. It was so good. But this is pretty much matches up to it. Hey. said everything this mac and cheese is good like i said the bread mm -hmm. i'm kind of struck out for me but that's just me i know you say you liked it man i i'm a sucker for cornbread <laughs> <laughs> i thought you say you say you grew up in watts or something mm -mm. no i mean i'm a military brat that's why i'm not like a typical latina you know i don't have an accent like where'd you go 
well, grew up, spent nine years of my life in Germany. You know. Do you speak it? Uh, nine. Um, <laughs> Ten. I know, I know cuss, cuss words. I used to, you know, know a few more phrases. <coughs> oh, man. <coughs> That's spicy. This is the house wine, no? Yeah. I don't know. But it's good. Look, well, it, I had a full glass. Now it's just this. Cheers. To Thank your you show. For, you know, coming on. I had to beg you. <laughs> you didn't have to beg me. What are you talking about? <coughs> it was like, you know what's funny? It was, like I thought it was either do this show or help you move. <laughs> you, were, you were like, what are you doing on Wednesday? I'm like, oh, shit, she's going to have me help her move. No, doing a I show and you get I free food. I know you're not going to do no labor. I would do that. Really? Yeah. Okay. You know, the pillows and shit like that, you know. <laughs> not books or couches or anything like that. No, nah, that's not happening. Man. Actually, that's not um, a bad idea. I do want to move because, you know, my apartment has been getting drenched from the, you know, we actually had a little bit of flooding in Long Beach. You're in Long Beach, right? Mm-hmm. That's weird. We complain about water and then we complain we have too much. You notice <laughs> yeah. that? I know, right? Yeah, but, you know, we're heading into spring now. Mm -hmm. So... You got your, your summer, you know, agenda happening. I, I love summer. I, I'm, I'm like, I, I, I tell you the truth, I don't dislike any, because it's California, you know, you don't, mm -hmm. we don't have no seasons really. It rains and we freak out, like. Oh my gosh, everybody doesn't want to go outside. But when you go to like, when you go to like, um, like other states and they talk about like earthquakes, to us, that's kind of a joke. I know, right? They, they like think the that earthquake is like thing and it's the, the thing only that we don't care about. Yeah, the people that like that the, the die in earthquakes are elderly and they're, <laughs> you know, what I'm saying, or like you know they have heart attacks. And nobody's like that one time the, the freeway fell, but they learned from that, so they <laughs> fixed them all. And, <laughs> and then they have movies like the new movie Twisters coming out. To me, that's scary. You're walking down the street and you get sucked in the air. Oh man, imagine. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then worried about the ground shaking. Oh my God, we get to be struck. Did you feel the last earthquake? Yeah. I did too. Barely, but I felt it. It lasted like a good eight seconds. At my house in Laverne, I had a friend of mine living. He was from Pittsburgh. He was renting out. I had like a maid's quarter. And um, <laughs> there was an earthquake. And he calls me from the little house under the house. And he goes, did the car just hit the house, bro? I'm like, no, man. That's an earthquake. That's an earthquake, man. They don't have those in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? That is so funny. I mean, it lasted a good, like, five to six seconds that I really thought, like, you know, what happens when it, if it lasts longer than ten seconds? Like, are you supposed to, like, go in the middle of the door? That's what I always heard. Mm -hmm. Get under a table. Or but I think we're all so lax about it. Nobody moves. I was just, like, I was just sitting there waiting for it to stop in my office. It's like, the, only, the only time I really got scared in an earthquake, I was in seventh grade when that Northridge one hit. And I was outside. It was right before school started, so we were outside, you know, waiting to go into class. And the the, the concrete, like the, the the pavement, like the blacktop, just went like a roll. Oh my god! And then you just seen it coming at you. Oh, that's crazy! And you then you went up, and then all these girls started crying. And that sounds like um, that scary movie, Children of the Corn. I never seen that movie. Oh, that movie has traumatized me. That's why I remember that part. The only movie that's ever horror movie that's ever traumatized me was The Exorcist, the original one. Mm -hmm. That one freaked me out. Oh, and the Michael Jackson thriller video that I was eight. <laughs> really? Mm -hmm. That oh yeah. I was at my aunt's house when they premiered it, and I went to go sleep next to her because <laughs> I was scared shitless. <laughs> I think you're the first person to like actually be scared of that. Of the Michael Jackson thriller. This is a great video. It doesn't make any sense, but it's still a great video. I mean, how do they know how to dance when they've been dead? Mm. You know what I'm saying? They got up and knew all the dance. It was like Monday night practice in the, in the graveyard or what? <laughs> yeah, that, that uh, music video is freaking record-breaking. Yeah, it was. Well, he was awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Michael Jackson was pretty genius. Yep, and he liked kids. <laughs> anyway... <laughs> You know what? I don't actually believe that rumor. I, you know what? I don't believe it, and I don't not believe it. I mean, like, in, you know, nobody proved nothing about anything. Right. Y you don't know. We don't. Yeah. The, yeah, he's definitely divided. Like, he's got his hardcore fans. Well, you know, like, I, I tell you, like, I don't understand a lot of things. It seems like all these people have these opinions about people. Like, 
I'm not a po political person at all. I don't like politics. I think anybody, when you bec become a politician, you, you already have, once you start that job, the campaign, you already have an enemy. Hmm. Who wants a job where you get instant enemies? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So why would you trust people like that? Why would you want, you know what I'm saying? You get a job, like, you know, you get a job at, I don't know, you run it in and out. You don't have no, in, no enemies. Burger King ain't like <laughs> mad dogging you. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I think, cause I, like I said, I don't have any opinion about no politics or nothing. I just think that, that Trump, as an uneducated guy, I didn't even mm -hmm. finish high school, but that he's not getting a fair shake, it seems like. Well, what about his new gold shoes that are freaking selling out? Those are dope, man. I kind of want a pair. I, like, I, like I said, I don't, <laughs> I don't care for the guy. If he, he asked me to come to a barbecue, I would, I would not RSVP. <laughs> But it's like they're treating them weird. Don't you think they're treating them weird? I know, you know, it's definitely a dirty game. It's, it's politics, you know, and um, once you're in the spotlight, like you're, you, like you just said, your enemies are going to find the dirt on you and just try and smear your name, you know. He got hit with a huge tax, you know, lawsuit. Not, not actual from taxes, but... Yeah, it was like a three hundred fifty million dollar fine or They're something. They're taking this, his signs off of his buildings. Mm -hmm. To me, that is like I'm sure that crushes his ego. And like I said, I'm not a fan of any politician. I don't care. You know what I'm saying? If we have a terrible president, I just have to work harder. But to me, it's like, well, I'll give you an example. This is the things that I see. All right, like um, ever since what Jackie Onassis Kennedy, mm -hmm. every first lady has been on every magazine. And she's the hottest one, and she hasn't been on no magazine. Oh, really? You don't she think that's kind of weird, though? Like I said, I'm not political. I don't care who wins. I really don't. I just think that's kind of crazy. Mm. Yeah, I didn't know that. I really did, like, admire her son, John F. K. Jr., the one that got killed in the helicopter. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was a helicopter or a plane? I thought it was... <clears throat> he was flying a helicopter with his, his girlfriend or his wife near that. The Hamptons, I think. Have you seen uh, that movie, Primary Colors? No. You haven't seen that movie? No. You gotta watch that movie. It's like, it's based on Clinton. It's like, you know how they loosely base movies on, you know, mm -hmm. real things? It's like, mm -hmm. it, 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 you could tell he's, a, he's cheating on his, you know, the first lady. And like, he, it's, it's, it's a really, really good, you gotta watch that movie. And like I said, I'm not political. I like, I, 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 I like, you know what I like watching? Like movies about like courtrooms and trials and crap like that. Oh I'm, my God. Like, um, one of the best movies is uh, A Time to Kill. You seen that one? With mm -hmm. Matthew McConaughey and uh, Samuel mm -hmm. Jackson. Remember when mm -hmm. they rape his little girl and he goes and shoots him? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so intense. I love those movies. Mm. What's your favorite movie? You know what? I'm a sucker for comedies. Okay. Um, I don't like to cry. I only like to laugh. So my favorite movie... I know you cry with, with your life anyway. You don't have to <laughs> put a movie on it. Oh, Jack. I'm just kidding. <laughs> You know what, Jeff? I'm just joking with you. No, 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 no. It's it's fine. It's fine. I, I accept, you know, laugh at my pain, laugh at my pain all day, you know. That's why I like Kanye's new song. He's like, are you not entertained? He's like, does my pain not entertain you? Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, Kanye gets it, you know. But um, so my favorite movie just off the top would be a comedy. And, you know, top top movie that I could probably watch over and over because that's what I think a definition of a favorite movie would be. Something yeah, of course. You, if you, you see watch, it on and on the guy, uh -huh. you hit it. Um, so it would be a movie that a lot of people haven't heard. It's called Orange County. It's with um, Tom Hanks' son. Colin Hanks? Colin Hanks. And um, gosh, I don't remember who else. Maybe Jonah Hill is in it. But How long ago it come out? It came out when I was in high school. I think Seth Rogen came out in it. Um, but it is the cheesiest freaking <laughs> flick. And I just could watch it, and it's it's really based on like they follow like this, like you know bougie California family who really don't have problems, but they make problems because the the stay at home wife is an alcoholic, you know, and they have a maid, and you know they're the people that haven't made, but then honestly they just have like these internal family problems that are like really funny. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. You know what's you know what I, I trip out on. Is when people they put like Oscar nominee. The, the, people don't give a shit about you know what I'm saying. I'm, I, do you know anybody that does that? Do you know anybody that's going through the guy? Oh, it's an Oscar nominee. You got to watch that. We don't care. 
They do that because of the, the boost their own little egos. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it's going to change because it's an Oscar. No, we don't care. Half That's the movies true. that win Oscars, we don't care. That is so true. All the award shows when they're, you know, going down the best. A lot of these movies are like you never even heard of. You're like, who, who the hell is sometimes, sometimes they hit a home run. Like Forrest Gump. That was a great movie and that won Best Picture. But look at back in the days, Amadeus. Oh, man. I've seen that. Out of Africa. There's no, but you, you can go like to Santa Monica Promenade, right? Mm -hmm. And walk around and find like 50, 60 year old people and ask them what's your favorite movie from the 80s. They're not going to say Out of Africa. <laughs> They're not going to say Amadeus. You know what I'm saying? It's like, they, 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 like, look at the car commercials. Motor Trends, Car of the Year, four years running. Do we really give a shit? <laughs> can it get me laid? That's what I want to know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's a good note for all these car dealer shows. And know? then, like, yeah, like um, a good friend of mine is. Um, um, he was in the Fast and Furious movies. And, um, like, people, he posted that they made um, Fast 10, right? And I'm like, and then there people were talking crap. And, I, and I'm like, like, 40, 50 comments. Like, why they, d and I put, I put a comment to kind of back them up. I'm like, they're still watching them. Mm. They're not going to make, they're going to not, they're not going to make movies that people aren't paying to see. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if they're making more, obviously people are watching them. Yeah, I stopped watching Fast and Furious after like part one. Yeah, I was on. I was at three and I stopped. <laughs> so you're right. I mean, there's obviously a new audience every other year, you know, for that movie since they keep making them over and over and over. Th that's what I'm saying. They make them because people are still paying to see them. If people don't pay to see it, they're not going to make it. Mm -hmm. It's like a supermarket. You know what I'm saying? You put up a display of like you know whatever the newest toy. As soon as they stop selling, they're going to yank them off. You know, then we got, you know, I did that movie, Juma Neutron. And then, um, like, they're, they keep talking about re rebooting it. I don't know if they are. I love that cartoon. You know, that was right in the era where my son was. Uh, in that age. Mm -hmm. You know what's funny, too, is, like, it's all, the, I, I meet, like, people that, that are in their 30s. And they're like, oh, no, I love that. I'm like, I, f I keep forgetting. We did that in the early 2000s. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Barnyard. They want to bring Barnyard back more than Jimmy Neutron. I don't understand that one. Jimmy Neutron was. So funny. It was the movie was I, I, I gave it a seven. You know I wanted and the, the director and the creator are just is a remarkable guy. I mean he's the one that wrote um, I think he wrote Ace Ventura two. Oh wow. He wrote um, Bruce Almighty. He wrote Evan Almighty. Oh wow. Uh, it, it, I think uh, all Jim Carrey movies. Yeah, because him and him they they met on the set of In Living Color. He was a writer. For in living color. Oh wow! So and he told he was telling me the story. His name is Steve Odekirk. He was telling me a story. So I got excited. I, I I thought they were gonna put me on David Allen Greer. I was gonna get to work with David Allen Greer, and they put him with Odekirk. And you seen what happened? So Jim Carrey just just destroyed it. <laughs> Jim Carrey is so classic in Living Color. I love that they show reruns right now on it on cable. I still freaking that's a show that I will definitely stop and watch. That show, Martin. Um, but Jim Carrey, super classic, man. Well, people don't know, that movie was written, Ace Ventura, was written for a guy named um, Brian Regan, mm. who's a remarkable comedian. He's badass. And he turned it down. I heard this. <laughs> I, I heard this from pretty reliable sources, though, but I heard it. And Jim Carrey took it, and psh, the rest is history. If you read that script, like, because they were, they, they kind of, um, Odekirk says that, he didn't say they did a good job, it seems they kind of inched through it. And then when Carrie got it, he just but. Oh my God, Jim Carrey's a freaking genius. Oh my God, he's badass. Robin Williams, that cat. Hey, we're in the Robin Williams booth right now. So sitting here at the amazing stand-up comedy club. Mm -hmm. We're in the Robin Williams. I work with him on Happy Feet. Oh my God, so what was that like? <sighs> it's like trying to catch a chicken. <laughs> he's so quick, you have to, it's, I'm serious. It's literally like, you know, and he didn't stick to no script. So we just had to catch up with them. And then he's off when, all right, cut, cut we're going, the Australian director, we're going to take a break, mate. Everybody take time. Really? Because me and Elijah would smoke cigarettes. And the director knew that. So he, he would let us go, um, he would let Elijah, he didn't care about my ass, but he let <laughs> Elijah go smoke a cigarette. I got to smoke one too. So he, he calls for a break, right? He gives us a smoke break. And he says, uh, he goes, he goes, hey, Jeff. You see the new Anne Frank movie starring Arnold Schwarzenegger? I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? He goes, she's up there. The bitch is up there. 
<laughs> Put her in the chapel. They're just constantly on. They're like just, he was talking about uh, Jumanji. And he was talking really serious with me, and I just jumped into it. He goes, yeah, we had a real problem with that movie. Um, the animatronics and the alligators was not working very well. And then the monkey's fur, they didn't know how to film that. But then they filmed my arm. <laughs> just like. <laughs> oh, my God. Just he's so quick with it. He's like, he's. You know, rest in peace, Robin Williams. Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, it's, it's really sad that, you know, he, he ended up going when he did. You know, kind of similar to the other comic that was, um, he, well, his wife murdered him. Oh, uh, Phil Hartman? Yeah. He was good, but he, but Phil Hartman was more of a straight guy. Like he had, he, he, he knew how to play the straight funny. That's a very difficult role to play. Mm -hmm. Have you, did you see that movie House Guest? Mm -hmm. with, with Sinbad? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. did a great job in that. Yeah. Uh, Sergeant Bilko, have you seen that movie? No, no. Okay, how are you going to do a show about movies and not see any of them? Oh, well, because I want you to tell me about, you, you know, the ones you've seen. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's all I do. I, like, I literally am like a paid bum. But I do. Sergeant Bilko, I mean, that was definitely came out in the 90s, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you said Sergeant, I like to think of like that one with um, the Wayan brothers. Oh, um, Major Pain. <laughs> yeah. That movie. That's second my all-time favorite movie. Really? Oh, my God. And then I was hosting one night at the Ha Ha Comedy Club, right? And he walked in. Oh, and he did a set. And at the end of his set, he goes, you know, I really should have practiced out these characters before I made movies about them. <laughs> and I got off the stage. I'm like, uh, Damon, I'm like, you need to shut the fuck up. <laughs> first of all. Major Pain was one of the funniest movies I've ever seen in my entire life. Yeah. I've seen that movie 3,000 times. It's a great movie. Um, Blank Man, have you seen Blank Man? <laughs> yeah. Blank Man no, was I mean, hilarious. The concepts are insane. They're, it was awesome. <laughs> so would you say that that's one of your um, favorite movies then? What, Blank Man? No, Major Pain. Oh yeah, number two, easy. I, I, my favorite movie is uh, The Last Boy Scout. I have you seen that one? No, I haven't. Okay. Oh, is it a drama? No, it's like a comedy action film. Okay. Um, Damon Wayans plays a football player who gets, um, that he gets um, banned from the league. And his girlfriend is Holly Berry, and she gets killed, but she hired Bruce Willis to find out more stuff about the, 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 the people there because they're crooked, the guys that banned him. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, that's, it's, it's just so clever. And it sounds I, like a good movie. Should. I'm a big Damon Wayans fan, though, too. So. Yeah. Have you ever worked with him? Um, yeah, well, at, at the clubs. Mm -hmm. I worked with his brother. His brother tried to put a TV show on with me, Keenan. That guy is just, I think he's completely underrated. Completely. Like, he was, like, telling me stuff, and he was morphing into characters and stuff right in front of me. I'm like... Oh, shit. You think he's a shapeshifter? <laughs> he, he, <laughs> he goes, he was telling me a story about, he was, he's all, he's, you don't know what people think, Jeff. He's all, he goes... I, I, I interviewed this homeless lady, and, um, and uh, I go, how much money would change your life right now? And he went, and just turned into her. Oh, my God. He went, like $2,000. Oh and he just God. morphed in. I'm like, what the fuck is you? Oh, my God. And like the extra. No, he's so talented. There's a lot of people that are very talented that do not get their, their... I think that, um, like, uh, Chris Kattan. Yeah. I don't think they use him properly. But a guy like that, I see a bunch of talented people that just didn't get their. Yeah. There's a guy named Daryl Heath. One of the fun, when I was coming up, I was in like my teens, and he, I would watch him. That guy is the most talented guy that I have ever seen. Him and a guy named Luke Torres. But him, he would do something that's completely unheard of. He would tell you the joke and tell you the punchline. He would tell you the punchline, and he did it, and it was hilarious. Hey, so that, that's a, like you're like I was watching them like how fuck you do that you know what I'm yeah. saying that's like you have a surprise for somebody and you tell them what it is before they open it yeah and then when you show it they are still surprised he did a bit about uh, Batman and how he had to test out his things right <laughs> so he like he would just use like regular props like he pulled his wallet out right he pulled it uh, Batman he's like so he, Batman walks in with his with his mask on right his mask <laughs> on and then he goes and then the, he's all like, stop it. You, you, you get down or something like that, right? Batman's, and then the guy kicks him, and then he goes like that. And, <laughs> so his mask fell off. And then he gets a recorder, he goes, oh, bat note. 
<laughs> make mass. Like he already told you what he was gonna do. <laughs> the guy's amazing. Yeah, I think a lot of um, of comedy. I mean, you know, is about timing, right? It's just how people deliver. You know, that's why some people are known for like the way their voice sounds and. Yeah, like Chris Rock. Chris Rock writes funny jokes and he talks funny too. So it's a double mm -hmm. threat. That's why he's so good. And there's a lot of guys that, that they, they, it's all rhythm up there. So yeah, it's a rhythm you have to kind yeah, of find. Yeah, it's definitely timing for sure. And like, I don't, I don't want to say that the, 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 the TV people don't know what they're doing because obviously they do. But like, I just, I know that when you, when you make a cast of like, like a, a show or a movie or something, like we're making, we just uh, signed a, a deal to make a three movies. So um, my boy Cal back there was High Caliber Productions, and he um, he uh, we we we're gonna do a comedy Mexican comedy western. We're doing like a like a rom com type one, and we're doing. Um, Is it a trilogy? Hmm? Is it a trilogy? Mm, I don't know yet. We'll see. It. We'll see what <laughs> the sales are on it. <laughs> But I was telling him, he's all, what, 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 what do you want to do that they're not doing? And the one thing I said was, is that we have to get together. And Cal had a great idea. He said, he's in a rent, like a big Airbnb with like eight rooms, mm -hmm. like maybe even a cabin in like Big Bear or something. Mm -hmm. And okay. we're all just going to stay together for like a week and just get to know each other. Because if you notice, like if you watch the first two seasons of the Lopez show, it's terrible. Like if I if I put on the Lopez show and he has long hair, I change it. But when he has short <laughs> hair, I, it's gonna be funny as hell. Because they've worked out all of the. They like, know themselves. They like with uh, Jimmy Neutron. We did what, what was it? We did the movie, and then we started the series. And then when we started the series, we really had a kind of hankling of each other. But then when we were in the, the booth recording. You could tell, like the first six episodes, were, they weren't rocky, but, they, but you could tell the ones after that were just, we just knew what we were going to say. Yeah. Yeah. We, we just had a, we just had a hankling of each other. And then when we did Barnyard, this series, we, we um, a, a couple guys from Jimmy Neutron came with us. So we already had that gel and we, we started that series. So the main thing that they don't do that I wish they would do is mm -hmm. they should just put them together for like a weekend somewhere and just have everybody just talk and gel up. Just know, you know what I'm saying? Know, yeah. what, know their mannerisms, know what, now they, like look at, um, uh, what's it? my favorite sitcom is uh, Two and a Half Men. Yeah. You see after the third season, right. they were just like. Yeah, well, and what about that character change though when they, you know. Yeah, that Charlie show took Sheen. a, show took a shit. Yeah. Terrible, I've never heard anybody that likes those episodes. No, is it still going? Cause yeah. I feel like, yeah, they're still, like on TV. Well, yeah, well, that's why they wanted to get Charlie Sheen back. They wanted to buy him out for the reruns. Man, you know, I heard Charlie Sheen is, you know, doing very well. I don't know where I heard that, but I'm sure he's... I, I don't think that he can do, like, he can't do bad for himself. Yeah. I mean, you did drugs, you did all this shit, and, you, and you're still there, you know? Yeah. He was just in that, that series, that new series. I'm trying to remember what it was. Oh, the bookie, um, mm. uh, Sebastian Maniscalco. Mm. He he has an HBO series called The Bookie, and he was in that, and he looked great. Really? Mm -hmm. He he did like a he, the the bookies Sebastian and this black guy right. They started a, um, a like a bookie like betting, so that's what it's about. They go around and they take bets and they oh, take. Oh man, I want to see that. Oh, it's a great show. I think he would be great. You know what the most the that. terrible part about that show is? They haven't made new episodes. I've watched them all. I oh, want to see more. It's on HBO? You saw it on HBO Max, yeah. Or HBO, yeah. I have HBO Max. So. Dang, so I didn't know he was doing anything new. I gotta check that out. Yeah, he just does like a cab. He only does like two episodes, but... Yeah, he's living his best life, that's for sure. He doesn't even have to work anymore. Oh, definitely. You know, he's... No, got... he didn't have to work after Two and a Half Men. No, yeah. That, was that buyout for like $100 million or $80 million or something like that? Are you serious? I think so. They let him go and he got... That was, that was like their... What do they call it? The... Um, Severance pay or something? Well, no, the buyout. Because of the union, okay, this is where our residuals happen, right? Okay. And they're way worse than Charlie Sheen's. Okay, <laughs> We're, we, we follow on, they, they, they have a bunch of packages at SAG, and then they kind of look at what we fall into and what we don't. So, I'll give you an example. Jimmy Neutron fall, fell under the techno babble agreement. 
So right. this, is the, this is what that is. That's 14%. Okay, it airs once. When they air it again, we get 14% of what we got paid. Okay. You know, then it goes down to 11%. Then it goes down to 9%. Then it goes down to 7%. And it goes all the way down to 0.05%. Oh, wow. If you're on network, that falls under a different package. Mm -hmm. So basically, you do the same thing, but when it gets to the bottom, it goes back up. So mm -hmm. what they want to do is they want to just buy you out. Like, look, we'll just have you check this, and then you go away. Oh, wow. That's why Lopez, is, they bought Lopez out. They bought Roseanne out. They bought... So they can air them whenever they want. And we have um, Desi Arnaz to thank, thank for that. So okay. the rumor is, I don't know. Well, he did that with his uh, Ricky and Lucy show? Or what? <laughs> I don't know what, like, I really don't know the logistics of it, but somebody did that and that's great for us. I still get checks from Jimmy Neutron. Oh, I'm like God. a welfare mom. Must be nice. I'm sitting at the mailbox, go checking that mailbox Hell like yeah. a welfare mom, my Hell EBT yeah. card. <laughs> Hell yeah. I mean, cheers to that. Mailbox money. Can't even imagine. I got to get into movies. <laughs> <laughs> I need to get into more, so don't worry about it. Don't worry. Hopefully I'll get to see your, your new movie. What yeah, you... we'll throw you in that Western. What do you think? As a cameo? What do you think? Yeah. You know. We haven't worked it all out yet, but it's about this this uh, woman who owns a whorehouse. Oh, In perfect. the Old West. <laughs> yeah, we'll make you a whore. Don't worry about it. <laughs> we'll make you a whore just yet, Angelica. <laughs> We've been trying for 12 years. No, but um, yeah, she owns a whorehouse, and then uh, the mayor wants to get rid of her. So she calls like a, a old like fling. Who's the mayor? You got any casting? Um... Me, I'm the mayor. Really? Biggie is the sheriff. Oh, okay. Shout out Biggie. Um, we have Richard Villa plays the lead character, the guy that comes in and saves the day. And then we have, but that's all we have so far. We haven't really even, it's in the baby stages. It's like literally, well, how long, Cal? Like a month, month and a half? But you said you have the location, right? Yes, we have the location. Okay. A, a friend of ours owns a ranch. And, was it Santa Clarita, bro? Um, yeah, Agua Dulce. What? Agua Dulce. Agua Dulce? Yeah. Mm. So he owns the horses. He has the sets. and So we're going to shoot that. And then who wrote the script? We're writing it. Oh, okay. We, we, we barely are developing the storyline. So. That sounds interesting. I know. You know what we did? These were nice and tender, and we let them sit too long. Hey, this is so much, like... But it fell off the bone when I ate. Look at it. I know. You could see bone. I haven't had barbecue ribs in so long, and look at these bones, how thick they are. I know. Look at that. I, you know what I like, too? It's like, like look at the, the, the bones are sticking out the end, so you can, like, you don't have to, like, really, like, grab... I know. I really want to eat more, but I don't mm -hmm. want to get so messy right now, but... You can't, you can't help it when you're eating barbecue. Oh, I know. And this macaroni and cheese is bomb. Mm -hmm. What's the place? Ham bone, you said it was? Ham bones. Next door. Right here in Bellflower. Giving us food here at the stand-up comedy club. So, I'm, I love barbecue. Ooh, but, I, I don't know when I'm going to be here again. I'm going to ask John for a date here. But I, when I do, I'm definitely coming early. I'm going next door. Yes, yes, for sure. Any other questions, babe? Mm -hmm. Um... Well, I mean, I can't wait to see your when you start production and your new movie. Well, we have Mas Locos, too. Yes. That's a stand-up show. Yes. So you'll definitely be a... Are you filming again? We're filming. We're, we're, we have the pilot, and we're, we have the pilot. That was the one that you shot at the Ice House in Pasadena, yes. right? Yes. Okay. We have the pilot was done. It, what day, was it? It wasn't on Valentine's Day, right? No. Okay. I'm it was, to... no, it was like about. Because uh, you shot it like six months ago or something? No, not that long ago. I, we, we shot it like, no, it might have been, no, no, November. November we shot it. Yeah, so last year. Mm hmm. Because I did, I was in attendance at that show. Yep. Yeah. Cool. All right, babe. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah, no, you're welcome. And free food. I know. And good parking. <laughs> I'm glad you found good parking, but <laughs> I mean. This is your spot, you know, like I've seen you perform here so many freaking times. It's, always... it's, it's definitely the most high tech club in Los Angeles. <laughs> right. And they have everything like, you know, they have a phone in the green room that's connected to the bar in the kitchen. Are you serious? Yeah, you, it has, it's smart. numbered. It, like you pick up the phone and it says bar and you hit three and then they go bar. Can I help you? I'm like, what the hell? John freaking knows what he's doing. Oh, man. it's perfect. He is just like got all the ideas so you know i was happy to be able to 
shoot here. And then when he, when we decided that, I was like, I got to have Jeff. I was like, you know, so we wanted you for this show. Yeah, perfect. You know. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Yeah. No, so this is going to be on Chicano Hollywood uh, TV. Okay. On their channel. And, um, you know, this is going to be one of our last episodes that we're actually having food on the show. So Why is that? I don't know. We were just thinking next time we're going to... Budget cut or what? <laughs> yeah. No, just, kidding. just have tacos. So we were going to call uh, the Last Supper today. The Last Supper? <laughs> well, it was a good one, I'll tell you that. Do they so, deliver? Uh, I'm sure they do. I live kind of far, I, though. Yeah, I don't know if they're going to deliver where you're at. You know. You know It'd be bomb, though. That's good. Hell yeah. I can't believe you haven't eaten it before. No, I, t I work, but I don't eat too close to Showtime because I get like that. That makes sense. So. Yeah, no. I'm got to lose weight. Any shows besides the one you're doing tonight? Because I know no one's going to see that. Of course, yeah. Um, I get to laugh at, well, what I know right now for sure, but there's going to be stuff popping up. But I'm doing my birthday weekend, May 2nd through the 5th at the Laugh Factory in Covina. Okay. That's a brand new comedy club. It's only been awesome. open for like. I think like six months or something, eight months. Wow. And it's like literally a block from my house. I could literally walk home. Oh, nice. That's yeah. cool. Hell yeah. And then, yeah, and then hopefully we'll get some free alcohol. So, oh, you know they're going to hook it up, Jeff. They better. <laughs> you know they will. They know what they're getting themselves into. I had a nice little glass of wine with you. Yeah, you did. I don't like the wine glasses. They look bougie when you're a dude Cheers. drinking. Cheers. Really? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, <laughs> and he stepped on the dog. <laughs> That's why he didn't get a wine glass. You're too funny. I keep it real. Yeah, you're too funny, man. So, Jeff, I appreciate you. Um, thank you for always, you know. Oh, talk, we got your back, baby. You know that. And um, he likes, he's a really good ear. You know, we like to bounce ideas off of each other. And he tells me when I have a bad idea. <laughs> you tell me when I'm a bad idea. <laughs> But he keeps it real, and that's why I'm like, you know, I appreciate that. And I think anyone that knows you appreciates that about you. Well, you <laughs> Everybody it, knows that about you. I'm not saying anything new here, people. If he, you know who Jeff Garcia, you know what it is. You know, that's why I get that last phone call. I go, okay, I told my friends, and they said this. What are you going to say to me? Because they know I'm going to tell them the fucking truth. I know, yep. Hell yeah. And, you know, that's why people love you, you know. So your shows are always just so funny to be at, and... If you are young and sitting in the front row, he will like grill you. You know, last time I saw you grill like this row full of like <laughs> twenty-something-year-old guys with no girls with them. Oh yeah, that you was. You're just like embarrassing the hell out of him the whole time. Well, you're gonna come out uh, tonight, right? You're gonna go down for oh, this yeah, tonight. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for you're, sure. You're on the guest list. I put you plus five. So if you want to bring anybody else, you're oh, welcome. I love it. Thank you. Yeah, for sure. I wouldn't miss it. Speaking so. of, I gotta get going, baby. Oh, all right. Well, Jeff. Thank you for enjoying this dinner with us here at the Comedy Club. No, no. Up. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. No, man. And you know what? Hopefully we'll do this again. This shit's got to be like 20 bucks, so I need to save me some money. <laughs> yeah. I mean. And well, my chick's got an electric car, so we didn't pay for gas, so we're good. <laughs> oh, sweet. Yeah. Kiki. Shout out to Kiki. Yeah, right? Shout out to Cal. Shout out to the crew here. My squad. Uh, Willie, Julio, Evan. Um, and anybody else who knows, shout out to John, the owner of the Stand Up Comedy Club. You rock. Thank you for letting us shoot here at your wonderful location. Definitely. And um, come see Jeff here soon. Yeah, please. You know, he always sells out. Instagram, Jeff Garcia LA. Yes. That's where I'm at, at Jeff Garcia LA. Yes. Go follow him, subscribe to his YouTube channel. That's right. You got any billboards running right now? Uh, one by Morongo. That's it. Hey, yeah, you just came back from Vegas, too. Yeah, right? we were at Tropicana. Hell yeah, Jeff. Hell no, it. dude. That was 14 shows, two a night for a week. Damn. That was, I had to take a vacation for my vacation. Hell yeah. <laughs> it was fun. Man, I bet. I bet it was fun. Yeah, I saw you out there on those billboards. I was like, <laughs> go, Jeff. Doing it up. Not bad, Vegas. huh? Right there on the strip. That's dope, man doing bigger shows so it's always fun to hang out with you and i'm glad thanks you again able babe. To make this happen appreciate it thanks okay. very much thanks jeff all right man. Keep peace watching. out